Hi, good morning to all. Welcome to today's Daily Dose of Market Insights uh, by Oenda, presented by myself, Kelvin Wong, the Senior Market Analyst of Oenda Asia Pacific. So very good morning and happy uh, Thursday and happy uh, Fed Day. So as you all know, happy Wednesday, pardon me, and happy uh, Federal Reserve FOMC Day. So today will be the 1st of November, a brand new a brand new month. So before we start our Daily Dose of Market Insights, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. All right, so uh, leverage trading carries a high degree of risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Losses can exit deposits. This presentation is not an offer or solicitation to buy or sell, nor financial advice or recommendation for any investment product. And also uh, any forecast prediction or projection in this document is not necessarily indicative of the future or likely performance of the product. This advertisement has not been reviewed by the monitor Monitority Authority of Singapore. So with that, uh, very quickly, this is the three key gist of our daily dose of market insights. For those who have really joined us on a very frequent basis, we will cover a quick recap of what happened yesterday in the global markets and events that events that took shape. It could be uh, corporate events, earnings release or economic data releases, and as well as what are the key data to look out for for today and events, and as well as uh, we call it uh, US earnings that could actually potentially impact the uh, S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100, and even the Dow Jones. And to round up will be the all important short term technical analysis outlook, ranging from the FX, stock indices, and as well as key commodities market. So with that, uh, without further ado, let's take a look at what happened yesterday. So yesterday, there actually one big major event will be the BOJ monetary BOJ monetary monetary policy decision. So for BOJ, no change. Short term interest rate is still kept at negative, negative 0.1%. But what's interesting over here is that they are they actually tempered with their year curve control. Okay, so let me share with you this particular screen because it has major implication in the medium term, all right, rather than the okay, short term, it all depends on flows and sentiment, but this could fundamentally be a, a, a big changer. Okay, so now let, let me share my screen for you all to see. Okay, over here. Okay, good. So let me hide myself as well so that you all could focus more on the screen. Okay, so this is the new policy that BOJ enacted. So we, if you all could recall, Japan itself is still in a dovish, or I would say that uh, ultra is ultra dovish mode in terms of monitor, monetary policy, and the rest of the world has starts to actually either tighten their monitor, tighten their policy, uh, rising interest rate that allow their uh, long-term sovereign bond yield to inch up much higher with the acceptance of China that are still in a, a uh, we call it a easing mode. So for Japan over here is that if you look at this one on my screen on my left, this was the cap of 1% on the 10-year JGB yield. So this 10-year JGB yield is being revised upwards since late December last year three times. So because at the end of the day, the yield keep on going up higher. Why? Because Japanese inflation pressure is actually slowly inching up and start to stabilize above 2%. So at this time point of time, there was actually a rumor or speculation before yesterday's uh, announcement, uh, BOJ, what you call it, monetary policy decision announcement. There is a speculation that uh, BOJ might raise this ceiling, this hard cap, hard cap 1%. So every time the JGB yield go up 1%, uh, BOJ got to come in and sell Japanese 10 year government bond to push down the yield again. All right. So uh, then bond price come down. Uh, so uh, yield come down, bond price go up. So if yield keep on coming, yield, if yield keep on sustaining, uh, can't break above that 1%. So that will be very detrimental on the Japanese uh, yen, the currency uh, the, 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 against the dollar. So what they did over here is that they actually removed this hard cap at 1%. And they will nimbly conduct market operation. Nimble, the keyword is nimbly. Uh, there is nimbly. It means that they need not to be every day coming into the JGB market and buy JGB bonds to suppress the 10-year JGB yield. So right now, there is no upper limit. That means there's no hard cap ceiling. That means at the end of the day, a speculator got to guess where will BOJ step in to actually start to suppress the 10-year JGB yield. Okay, so 
at the end of the day, in the longer term, that means IE, JGB yield right now has more free will to actually fluctuate according to market forces. So that is actually in the long term, uh, I was trying to say long term, beneficial to what I call the Japanese yen. All right, long term. Short term, yeah, you can see some uh, fundamental uh, technical factors that is still at play. But long term wise, it could be a beneficiary factor for the Japanese yen, which in turn uh, could also encourage what I call positive sentiment or consumer sentiment into the stock market. Why? Because if you look at the latest outlook on prices by the BOJ is that this is the reference uh, by BOJ, reference CPI, that means it's excluding fresh food and energy. You look at the way they upgrade their, uh, uh, we call it their, 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 their forecast. Previously it was made in July. Yesterday it upgraded to 3.8%. That's for that's for the current physical year. Next physical year they also upgrade to 1.9%, and physical year 2025 they upgrade to 1.9% for 1.8%. So this 1.9% has been upgraded. Uh, it's coming very inching very closer to that 2% target mark. Of what BOJ desired a uh, targeted inflation uh, rate to be for the uh, we call it for them to be much more uh, uh, comfortable in normalized interest rate policy towards on the what you call from negative to positive that's a short term interest rate so all in all right it actually shows signs of confidence that BOJ now he starts to be more nimble that means they actually lay the forward guidance groundwork to be subtly hawkish at least in the first half of next year to guide market participants that they are ready potentially to shift away from short-term negative interest rates to at least 0%, then solely to the positive side. That means, i.e. catching up with the rest of the world, except, yeah, with the rest of the world. So right now, all, all in all, is actually positive for the Japanese uh, stock market. Why? Because you look at the Nikkei 225 yesterday, it rebounded off the the uh, a 200 day moving average. So later we share with you, I will share with you the, the Nikkei 225 short term technical outlook. But what's interesting over here is that the Japanese yen goes against this fundamental. So the, the Japanese yen going to weaken much further yesterday, uh, broke above the 150.90 uh, upper limit of the key medium term resistance, pierced all the way to I think a 33 year high, US session uh, uh, 115170 uh, uh, level. So with, with, with that, the, uh, it seems to me that uh, the markets are actually ignoring these uh, subtle changes by BOJ and continue to actually focus on a rather hawkish Federal Reserve. All right. So what I want to share with you over here is that uh, if you take a look at the JGB yield, so right now, right, this JGB yield right now is piercing upwards towards the 1% level. That was now become a reference level. And what's interesting, if I were to actually incorporate with the current JGB yield with the spread of 10-year Treasury yield minus of the 10-year JGB yield. Previously, the spread has been moving upwards. All right, so right now the 10-year yield spread against the Treasury with the JGB has now started to inch downwards, showing lower high. So this scenario over here actually doesn't actually uh, support the yesterday movement of that dollar yen swift push up so that is actually driven by more of a technical movement by breaking of resistance level that uh participants who are actually short on the dollar got got stop loss and able to squeeze all the way up but fundamentally if you look at the intermarket correlation of the yield spread between the u.s treasury 10 year and the 10 year jgb year now uh, it doesn't support uh, uh we call it in the longer term uh, medium term of further uh, we call it a yen weakness against the dollar. Then if I were to actually lower down to the two-year spread over here, if you look at the two-year spread of the two-year treasury against the two-year JGB yield, it has been going sideways below the 1.11 resistance mark as well. So telling us that the lower lower 10-year year spread of the two-year between the US treasury and the 10-year JGB yield also in the medium term to long term uh, doesn't potentially support further yen weakness against the dollar. So something very interesting to look out for a, from a medium term perspective. Uh, if you were to look at this uh, intermarket uh, uh, analysis by taking into that yield spread into the consideration and subtly uh, the BOJ uh, having this uh, rather mild hawkish forward guidance and what it did yesterday okay, that I explained earlier by removing the hard cap only 10 year JGB yield and increase they are what you call that uh, a, a, a revised uh, upbeat uh, inflationary uh, uh, forecast for FY 
2023 to FY 2025. Okay, so that's for the BOJ side of the story. And over here, uh, what we could see over here is that uh, in other economic the indicator is the US Consumer Confidence Index by Conference Bots. So US Consumer uh, Index by Conference Bot continue to inch downwards in the month of October. So uh, it fall in October. So this is three consecutive months of uh, inching downwards. So i.e. the earliest month of the summer uh, push up has more or less been uh, uh, deteriorated. So what we could see over here is that if next two months, November, December, it's going to show a breakdown and break below uh, the low, the, the, the level that we've seen at the start of this year. Potentially, right, we could be uh, see further economic deterioration in US uh, and potentially we may start to see a kind of a regime change like stagflation uh, environment. So, i.e. in the longer term perspective, uh, that doesn't also boss well for the US dollar and even the stock market as well. Okay, so that's a long term perspective. Uh, but in short term, uh, that I cover in my short-term technical outlook, right? Those are more driven by flows and technical factor. So those who actually for uh, 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 we call it um, listen to our daily dose of market insight since last Friday, we've been potentially advocating for a short-term counter trend rebound in the U.S. stock market ahead of the key important uh, meeting that is going out today with the FOMC uh, uh, meeting. But most importantly, FOMC meeting today, there's no dot plot projection. That means there's no release of latest economic uh, data like inflation or real GDP forecast by Federal Reserve Officer. Market participants will be focusing on the press conference later up from Powell. So, but she's reading Powell lips. Uh. But all in all, what we could see over here is that the stock market played out within our expectation. Market going to bounce since last Friday, uh, leading by the, the, the mega cap stocks uh, on the average with the acceptance of uh, NVIDIA yesterday uh, went down by negative 0.9%. So the reason why NVIDIA went down is the fact that because uh, there's a negative news flow saying that uh, out from China due to this ongoing US uh, tech war, bracket tech war with China, NVIDIA is being forced to cancel uh, certain orders with China. So that actually uh, came down by a fair bit. Google uh, still uh, uh, suffering from last week, uh, uh, fall after their lackluster earnings release. Okay, so but all in all, the benchmark US stock indices managed to actually stage positive return yesterday, intraday, ranging from 0.9% to 0.4%. So later I'll share with you where is the resistance level to watch uh, for this ongoing potential counter trend rally in the uh, US benchmark stock indices. Okay, then other key economic data released uh, for today will be the uh, China PMI data. Okay, so China PMI, uh, okay, let me go all the way down. Okay, we have this Caixin manufacturing PMI data. So Caixin one is compiled by the private sector. So yesterday you see the release of the uh, uh, government compiled manufacturing PMI, which is so strong to a negative growth ter territory below 50, so it, it at 49.5. So very similar, the sizing manufacturing PMI also strong to 49.5 as well. So that is also way below consensus of 50.8. So with that, right, what the uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, top policy person is that the PBOC yesterday has been seen adding liquidity into the market to actually support this negative uh, sentiment that is arising out from this uh, very, very weak Chising and uh, MBS manufacturing PMI data. So uh, it came in and give a bit of support to the market. So that's why we see uh, at a, later the Hansing uh, index actually managed to rebound at, at the yesterday lower boundary. Because yesterday we turned neutral for Hansing index. So Hansing index managed to bounce from the lower limit of our neutrality range. All right. So due to the fact that uh, PBOC is come coming in to smooth up this negative feedback loop, okay, by adding liquidity into the China money market after rates actually surged yesterday due to a potential uh, month end and as well as uh, also very likely to on this uh, uh, re reacting reacting to this uh, negative uh, we call it numbers out from the uh, China manufacturing PMI data for the month of October. Okay, so then uh, on top of that, uh, what other economic data to watch out for for today other than the Fed uh, will be this ADP employment change at 8.15 p.m. Singapore time. So ADP employment change is like a prelude to the official uh, non-farm payroll data that will be out on this coming Friday. So market is expecting a rather robust number again. Uh, previously, it was 
added at 89k for the month of September. So for the month of October, they are looking for almost a, a come to double at 150k. Something to look out for. Then on top of that, we have 10 p.m. the ISM manufacturing PMI data showing signs of uh, also a, a growth, a, a contraction again in the man manufacturing sector in US. Uh, market is expecting 49, uh, sim similar level at 49 in September. Okay, then all in all, right, we will see the all important definitely for sure the interest rate decision. So for now, market is really now expecting uh, due to the uh, last three weeks of guidance from Federal Reserve officials because net net most of them want to actually uh, wait and see uh, given the fact that the 10 year treasury yield has really inched upwards by a fair bit in the last three to four weeks. So that could actually consider as a indirect tightening uh, financial condition that is equivalent to a 25 basis point hike. So market participant is expecting them to no hike for this time around at 5.5%. Uh, so for most important, we'll be up later at 2.30 a.m. Singapore time will be a Powell press conference. So market participants will actually uh, hear him to see what is his view on the current economic situation in US and also to see hints about after the, uh, the, the next potential rate hike to be in December to bring the Fed fund rates to 5.75%, when will be the next potential rate cut coming in? So if you look at the Federal Reserve uh, pricing right now by the Fed Fund futures over here, so today's one for sure 96% is expecting no change. Only a small, uh, only uh, uh, I would say 0% is expecting a cut uh, over here. Uh, 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 no, 0% is expect, uh, expecting a hike. So the next hike potentially will come in in 13th of December at this point in time. So will be around 30%. So 30% odds for it to high up to bring it to 5.5 to 5.75. So that is likely the terminal rate. So like I say, market participants will actually uh, be hearing Powell's view on the US economy and to gauge uh, what is their reluctance to actually maintain this keeping interest rate higher for at this elevated level for a longer period of time. Because uh, based on the Fed Fund's uh, futures pricing over here, a uh, very clear uh, market uh, expectation is 51% to actually start to see the first rate cut coming in as early as June next year. All right, that followed by 70% in July. So very interesting to see how does this expectation play out after a uh, Fed Powell speech. Okay, so now uh, this is the key economic highlight and data to look out for for today. Now go on to the technical chart. So let us start with the short term technical outlook intraday for the stock indices first. So let's kick start with the Hong Kong 33 index. So the Hong Kong 33 index, yesterday we were neutral between these two range of 17,390 and 16,980. So if you look at um, the market actually reacted off exactly at 69.80 and shaped a bounce in today's Asia session. Uh. So uh, that is actually uh, more or less been uh, reacted to that uh, PBOC news, uh, looking to step in to add liquidity into the financial China financial market. So with that, we will be uh, turning bullish today for a short-term bullish bias condition to play within the range. Uh, we call it a range trading environment for today. Uh, and given the fact that the RSI has also has started to shape a higher low, very close to the oversold region. So I'll be, uh, instead of using 16,980 as my key short term pivotal support level, I'll keep it slightly lower at 16,800. So 16,800 holds potentially we could see a further push up to retest the upper limit of this short term range resistance at 17,390 slash 17,540, which is also the 200 day moving average acting as a, so a resistance level and the minor swing high of 25th of October and 30th of October. So bear in mind, this is a short term technical outlook uh, 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 bias uh, for a uh, push up towards the upper limit of this range configuration. Is there any signs of a major medium term bullish reversal right now? Uh, the answer is no, because there is no clear condition yet. But in the short term, uh, potentially yes, uh, due to the, the hourly RSI start to turn uh, rather positive. But however, if we start to see uh, hourly close below 16,800, then potentially uh, this longer term or medium term uh, impulsive down move may continue to expose the next support level at 16,550 in first step. Okay, so that's for the Hong Kong 33 index. Okay, so moving on uh, for the uh, Japan 225. Okay, so very quickly, Japan 225, right? at the start of this week, right, we were sh I was sharing with your uh, potential uh, push up from the 
20 day moving 200 day moving average price actually actually bounce hit the resistance level at 31,430 31,630 level for the Japan 225 so with that right uh, price action on the hourly seems a bit overextended with the hourly RSI at the overbought region so I'll be potentially right in the short term again so I'll, I'll stress our short term that means intraday potentially there could be a pullback taking into place to actually uh, work out this short-term overbought push-up condition that we see yesterday that was this steep rally that's taking shape yesterday so i'll be using this level here 16,360 which is this uh, minor congestion zone over here and if we were to do the FIBO retracement taken from the last push down of 12 october to uh, 30 of october low that also confluence with the 50 percent retracement as well okay so this level here will be my short term oops let me highlight to you all so this level here will be my sh short term pivotal resistance for today okay looking for a potential push down okay so let me remove this okay so this is no longer a, uh, a pivot, right? Because for today, we were looking for that pullback. Okay, so potentially right now, there are two levels to watch over here. We'll be close to this level. Okay, so 31,630 short-term pivotal resistance, looking for a potential, uh, we call it a, 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 a counter trend pullback scenario towards the first support level at 21,270. A break below 21,270 exposes the next support level at 31,040, which is the minor, former minor swing high of 27th of October. So flipping to a short-term bearish bias counter trend scenario on the downside, that means a pullback uh, below 31,630 for today on the Nikkei 225 or the Japan 225. But however, if you start to see an hourly close above 31,630, then this uh, impulsive up move may continue to test the next resistance level over at this former swing high, this swing high area. Okay, this minor swing high area of 17 October, and 18 of October acting as a resistance at 31,000, 30, pardon me, 32,130 level which is also close to the 50 day moving average i think as a resistance as well okay so that's for the japan 225 now moving on next will be the german 30. so german 30 uh the rsi over here hasn't still continued to show signs of no clear signs of a bullish exhaustion uh for our earlier counter trend rebound scenario since the start of uh friday so uh hasn't hit the overbought region yet so uh, we will still maintain our potential counter trend uh, rebound scenario uh, above a Titan key short term support level, which is a yesterday swing low area at 17, 14,000, pardon me, 14,700. So 14,700 will be my key short term pivotal support level, uh, looking for a further potential push up to test the next resistance at 14,990 slash 15,090. So we've got like a zone, we saw the 200 day moving average. Okay, so but however, if we start to see an hourly close below 14,700, then this uh, counter trend rebound scenario will be invalidated to see another round of impulsive down move to test the next support level at 14,570. So that's for the German 30 index. So now US index, uh, let us start with the US Wall Street 30 first, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average just going to push up and came very close to our counter trend rebound resistance level at 32,340 level before it actually trade a sideway. So if you look at the uh, uh, the RSI, RSI on the hourly chart start to show similar high. So this is considered as a bullish divergence as well, where price action going to shape higher high. Okay, so with that right, it could be a bit of a, 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 a churning configuration. Uh, I mean, churning means it start to move pretty much sideways uh, during the FOMC. Uh, we call it from now until uh, Fed Chair Powell uh, uh, speech. Uh. So with that, I'll be watching these two level. So uh, we, we know that it's coming very close to the 
counter trend resistance level already, which is all the 20 day moving average. So I'll be using this 32,340 as my key short term pivotal resistance level. That means any any level that is coming very close to it, I'll be having a flip to a bearish bias instead, rather than because it's now very close to the resistance, a bit more to go. So I'll be uh, fading this kind of a fading the strength potentially. That means looking for a uh, a revival of a bearish bias condition as long as 32,340 is not surpassed that means there's no hourly close above this level and a breakdown below 32,780 so this is my this is my downside trigger level potentially we could see a continuation of the down move to retest uh, last Friday's swing low area at 32,320 so that's for the uh, US Wall Street 30 uh, uh, we call it uh, outlook short term technical outlook so moving on to the Nasdaq 100 so on the Nasdaq 100 itself over here, if you could take a look at it over here is that the Nasdaq 100 uh, yesterday also going to push up higher, coming very close to the 14,450 mark level, but still got a bit of room more to go before hitting that short term pivotal resistance at 14,590. So what's 14,590 is actually the lower boundary of this uh, short term descending channel that is in place since 12 October high. And as well, if I were to do the FIBO retracement all the way from 12 October high to last Friday's low, it's close to the 38.2% FIBO retracement. Uh, price level on the NASDAQ 100 uh, on the RSI is much more positive as compared to the Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average. Hasn't hit the overbought level yet. No clear signs of a bullish, uh, bearish divergence uh, at this point in time. RSI higher low. So potentially, right, we may see a bit of last push up ahead of the FOMC meeting and the Powell press conference. So a bit of volatile movement between this time period. So we could see a kind of a, because it's coming very close to the resistance zone already. So I would rather use a, a, a what you call, uh, uh, a, a, a trend trading strategy to, to look for what I call a push up towards this resistance level here, fit that strength using 14,590 as my key short term pivotal resistance. As long as there's no hourly close above this level, I'll potentially uh, we could actually look look for a continuation of this uh, multi time frame trend trading strategy to actually uh, 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 flip to a bearish bias condition right now from a counter trend rebound scenario that we have since last Friday. So as long as 14,590 is not surplus to the upside, no hourly close above it, 14,250 will be a downside trigger level. This level breaks potentially could see a retest of last Friday's swing low at 14,065 slash 13,960. So what's 13,960 is a, a graphical uh, support level, a FIBO extension, and as well as the on the daily chart is the 200 day moving average as well, coming to it at 13,960 level. Okay, so with that, uh, that's pretty much sum up with the outlook on the short term benchmark indices. So very quickly, let's go to the uh, you, you, the 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 uh, pardon me, the FX market. So for the euro dollar, so euro dollar last day we were neutral. Uh, so but yesterday uh, it broke above the neutrality range, almost hit the 50-day moving average, and starts to revert down to the downside again. So with that right, uh, pretty much a volatile movement on the US uh, FX market. So with that, uh, I was still uh, we flipping to the bearish bias in short term on the euro dollar using 10685 as my key short term pivotal resistance level. Okay, so very close to this high over here. Uh, so rather than using this support level, this very tight key short term resistance, uh, which was this yesterday's uh, US session, yesterday's European session low, broken down, now turns into a resistance. Uh. So the RSI still be, is hovering below the 50 level mark, uh, hasn't hit the oversold level yet. So with that, right, uh, potentially the euro dollar could actually uh, see further potential downside within its range configuration to test the range support level at 10490. So as long as 10685 pivotal resistance holds for today. But however, if we start to see a break up a hourly close above 10685, then this short term bearish bias condition will be invalidated to see a squeeze up towards the next resistance level at 1.0735 slash 1.0760. So that's for the euro dollar. Uh, the sterling dollar going to be weak. Yesterday, it played around the key short-term pivotal resistance and reintegrate back below the 20-day moving average. So with that, right, uh, I'll be using 121.80 slash 122 key short-term pivotal resistance as a, a bit of pivot. So that was yesterday high. Uh, looking for a, a 
maintain that short-term bearish bias for a push down towards 120, 70, 120.75, which is uh, last Thursday swing low, uh, slash 120.50 level, okay, which is this range swing low of the October. So it's more like a bearish bias condi condition towards the bottom of this uh, range uh, over here. But however, if we start to see an hourly close above 122 level, that means a, a, a breakout above 122 figure level, potentially we could see a squeeze up to retest the 50 day moving average as a resistance. And as well as the 24th of October, last Tuesday swing high area at 12285. So the next resistance level will be 12285 slash 12330 level mark on the sterling dollar. Okay, so now very quickly on the Japanese yen. So if you look at the dollar yen scenario right now, uh, dollar yen, okay. So the dollar yen, right, what you see over here is that on the daily chart, it going to squeeze up over here. But what I did over here now, it seems to be a bit of pause at the 151.95 level. Uh, so this is the high where last year BOJ intervened. So there's a bit of cautious right now. Uh, market is actually watching for potentially it could be another round of BOJ intervention. But like I share with you all, the uh, yield spread between the 10-year JGB uh, and uh, as well as the two-year JGB against the Treasury notes, uh, it doesn't seem to be supporting this uh, further uh, uh, what you call a yen weakness against the dollar. So that could also be explained uh, in today's Asian session. There's a bit of uh, inching downwards of the dollar yen uh, rate, FX rate at this one five one ninety five level. So in short term, right, what I could do over here is that given the fact that uh the RSI in the, the hourly RSI starts to exit from the overbought zone and still shows room to actually come down close to the oversold level. So potentially uh I'll be uh, flipping I'll be still maintaining that short term bearish bias because it's very close to the resistance level at one five nine one five. So one five nine one one five one five one nine five will be the key short term pivotal resistance for today looking for at least a potential push down to retest yester uh, yesterday's uh, resistance taken out, now turns into a pullback support level at 150.50. A break below it, potentially see a retest of that 20-day moving average, I think as a support level, as this as well as this congestion area over here at 149.80 level. But however, if we start to see a continuation of that push up and a clearance above 151.95, then uh, we got to respect this very, uh, uh, I would say irrational or we call it uh, technical uh, bullish outlook uh, heading towards the next resistance at 1250, then followed by the next psychological level at 153 figure on the dollar yen. So that's for the dollar yen. So very quickly on this Aussie dollar. So for the Aussie dollar, uh, what we have yesterday, we actually flipped to a bearish bias below 63.95, which is the lower upper limit of this bullish descending wedge configuration that is forming since 1st of September. So it's within this bullish descending wedge. So we are looking for a kind of a last push down towards this wedge configuration, uh, holding below 63.95. So as long as 63.95 holds, uh, potentially we could see a next test of that support at 62.70 slash 62.60. So that's for the uh, outlook, or short term outlook on the Aussie dollar. So still maintaining that short term uh, push down, residual push down in that bullish descending wedge configuration, holding below 63.95 key short term pivotal resistance level. However, if we start to see an hourly close above 63.95, then potentially uh, we may start to see the start of this, uh, uh, we call it a, a potential multi-day uh, bullish uh, outlook on the Aussie dollar to test the next resistance level at 65.10 in first step. So that is the 30th of August and 20th of September minor swing high area over here. Okay, so that is the alternative view if 63.95 is taken out on the upside. That means I already close above this level here, 63.95. Okay, so uh, that's for the FX market. So very quickly on spot go lastly. So for spot go right now, uh, yes, it retests again the 2006 level. So this is indeed a key short term resistance level and it, it went down, managed to hold above the Titan key 1975 key short term pivotal support level. Uh, price level RSI now back to the oversold region again. So uh, what we could see over here is I'll be still using 1974 level for sure as my key short term pivotal support for gold uh, to maintain that short term bullish bias. Looking for another test again at 2006. A break above 2006 is much more uh, need, needed to reinforce the continuation of this impulsive up move for gold that is in place since 6 October low to, re, 
to test the next resistance level at 2028-2037. However, if we start to see an hourly close below 1974, then we will start to see a much more substantial uh, pullback level towards the next support level at 1957, followed by 1932, which is also the 30 uh, 200 day moving average and 50 day moving average I think as a support level. So with that, that pretty much sum up for today's uh, a rather lengthy uh, short term, uh, we call it a market insights because of a key event that is happening later on today. So with that, uh, have a great day ahead and we shall speak again tomorrow. Thank you.